Well, welcome everybody. Um, glad to have you all here and, and Paul, I'm so glad to see you. Um, we're gonna start you. with our treasures report. I don't believe we have anyone in addition who was came on for the public hearing. So um, we'll, if somebody does, we can take a few minutes with that, but I'll go ahead and put up the treasurer's report. Here. I'm going to share the screen. Hopefully you're all seeing what I want you to see. <laughs> um, the CPA summary here. And they haven't rolled over their figures from for July 1st on. So um, some of this includes figures since and some doesn't. It was what I could get from the town accountant. But our buckets, open space is 30,500. Historic set aside is 6550. Housing set aside is 258, 339. Plus we've given that 100,000 to the housing trust. Um, we've tried to reserve 500,000. So the undesignated fund balance is a million 303. So subtotal of available funds is in all those categories is 2,098,000. Um, we have reserved for expenditures a million 230,000. So our total is 3,329,000. Um, we've Mary. Yes. Have we always called the undesignated, or is that what used to be general? General. Okay. And I think um, it most towns call it undesignated because it's not designated one of those three buckets. And I think there was okay. some confusion with it being the general fund of the town, okay. um, or that it could be used for other things besides those categories. So, um, thank you. We talked about undesignated. And so far, um, again, this doesn't include all the real estate taxes from August 1st, just because they weren't available yet. But um, this does, but this doesn't yet, I guess. Um, but anyways, here's so far a little bit for the year. And we ended up with a huge amount last year, our biggest year ever, um, which is great and a 96% match, 94% match from the state. This year it's the record, you know, the registry of deeds is way down like 30% what it should, was last year. So we'll see if they do a surplus amount or not um, to help boost that up. Any questions on that? Yeah, Mary, I've got yes. something to add. Um, at the um, steering committee, they said they expect the first round state match to be 19%. Wow. And, then, the a first round. and then a little bit extra for the 3% uh, communities, uh, which Hadley is one. Um, and the legislature declined to fund the $30 million to boost the CPA like they had done in the past two years. Yeah, they did 20 million, la 10 million last year, 20 million the year before. Um, and so the base amount, if you're less than 3%, last year, I think the base amount was 39% match. So a 19% match is the lowest they've ever done. But in round two, they do the towns at the 3%. Sometimes there's even a round three. But the town, the state has the, that 10 million and 20 million last year came as a surplus, as a later budget. So um, it was added later. So we may still see something. Um, depends if there's any funds to to spread around, but it may be a lean year. Um, but the Hadley portion, about 330,000 should be pretty steady. So it's just the amount from the state. Um, so I have. And some of the uh, Hadley contribution is earmarked to pay off the bond for the, High school playing right. fields. Right. And the bond hasn't been taken out yet. Um of the and we'll talk a little bit later on about, but of the they've spent 175,000 on the fields. They still have 621,000 to spend before we even dip into the $750,000 bond. 
And um, so it may still be next year that that even starts, but you're right, that'll definitely have an impact um, when it happens. But we, we haven't needed to dip into it yet. Um, I'm gonna try just to Um, no, nope, let me bring it up here. Trying to, I had a picture of the, the, um, V1 vodka. Here it is. I'm going to try sharing just to remind us though we all know. <laughs> and, um, there's that one and then there's another one. Stop share. One more. I'm not going to try to share too many things, but just a reminder that um, you know we've got the town hall, we've got the church, we've got the farm building, we've got Goodwin, and then we've got the St. John's, the old St. John's Church here. So that, and then of course Russell. So they um, add quite a bit. Right. Yeah. There. So, um, discussion on the application from Paul Koza for 145 Russell Street, the former St. Charles Church. I do have, and I'd love to hear from you guys first, unless you want me to say this. Um, I do have what Stuart said about um, the questions we had about the application and also what the Historical Society Commission, Historical Commission, um, wrote in their letter. So would people like to talk first, or would you like to hear those? Go ahead, Mark. Well, I thought that uh, Diana's write-up was, uh, you know, obviously not something that she just threw together. It, it showed a lot of thought and care. Um, there was a lot of great his history, which I appreciated. Um, and... Uh, Stewart's uh, email, I thought was was good. So I, you know, I don't know if you care, but I'm I'm leaning towards uh, supporting this to the extent that that we can under Stewart's you know guidance to support the exterior work less the the uh, ramp. So that that which visually um, supports the historical context. Uh, and fabric of our micro downtown. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Risa, are you? I I agree with Mark. Absolutely. I really appreciated uh, the historical society's letter and Stuart's contributions, and and I'm I leaning for it. Absolutely. I'd like to see St. John's still on Route 9 every time I pass. I think it's a big benefit to the community. And it keeps the feel of Hadley. It really does represent the feel of Hadley. Nice. Other comments? I would just add that I appreciate the efforts that Paul has put into that building so far and that his uh, commercialization of it has been done very tastefully. I mean, it it still looks like the historic church. It uh, doesn't look like it's been turned into a Dunkin' Donuts or, you know, so. I do have a question for Paul. Uh, it, I believe it was... I can't remember if it was Stewart or the Historical Commission recommended turning it into a historical building. Is that going to impact you negatively as a business owner to convert this to a historical building? Well, first of all, I'd like to um, acknowledge everyone's comments. Uh, I really appreciate it. I do cherish this building. Like I said last time, I look at it as I'm not the owner of this great, I still call it a church, even though it's been de-churched. Um, I look at it as the caretaker of this building. And um, 
you know, all these things, you know, again, if, if it had five acres with it, and we'd be talking a different situation, but because it is landlocked, there's really not a lot of people can do with it. Again, being, I know I'm new to Hadley. I've only been here for 20 years. Um, you know, in, in the decade that I drove by it and it made me sad that it was empty. And, uh, when I, when I was able to purchase it and try to fix it up again, these things are, there's a reason why a lot of these churches stay vacant is because they're really not a money maker. They're kind of a money pit in many ways, but, um, you know, I want to just keep doing what I'm doing with it. Um, I think it's a really um, fair um, arrangement to say that the funds can only be used for the outside. And those are the most pressing needs, you know, the roof. Since I bought it, there's been some leaks in the ceiling, which I fixed. And then they have occasionally have come back with heavy snow or what have you. And these funds will help mitigate that and, and, and shore up uh, the roof and the backside of the steeple. So um, as far as the question goes about um, my desire from day one was to keep it how it is uh, and not turn it into a Dunkin' Donut. So it's not going to affect anything that I have to do or need to do with it. Um, the use that I've been using it for, I can, I, 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 you know, I've had it for almost a decade. I see it as the same use for the next decade. Andy, um, Papaki. Hi. Uh, yes, I, again, thank you for putting together this presentation, Paul, for the um, letter that... Uh, oh, Ma Mary did a lot of the work. So she, she's, I, I must say, she's been so kind and everything. And this is obviously, a, a not obviously, but a very busy time of year for me with working two jobs with the seven bars we have at the Big E. But I, I, she did a lot of the work and I just, I was just the initiator of it, so... Well, and, and, you know, full disclosure to the committee that uh, I spoke in, in uh, Paul's favor when he was looking to purchase this building as a private citizen back in the days when the select board was uh, exploring that, uh, given the uh, proximity of it and the landlocked aspects of it and the fact that he would have to uh, continually trans transit over public uh, property getting, uh, uh, you know, by the, at the time, you know, certainly Goodwin at the time, the senior center. Uh, was right there. Now it's just a library and Goodwood property, but he would have to be a good neighbor. So um, I did speak in favor of that. And, you know, Paul has uh, done a good job in, in stewardship of it. There really was no other option at the time. It was the diocese was hanging on to it and not really looking to sell to anybody else, not, not the town for uh, a variety of reasons. But um you know, given the the uh, efforts by the uh, historical uh, uh, commission and and the letter that was forward, I also uh, you know am, would could get behind uh, supporting the uh, reparations to the exterior um, that that is part of our public space and keeping that building in town from a, a historical standpoint, uh, the options for it are are pretty limited. So uh, that's the end of my comment. Thank you, Andy. Andy Morris Friedman. Hi, Paul. Welcome back. Um, I, I hope I didn't give you the impression that I was against your project when you were here last, uh, because I'm not. I uh, actually support it, and I'm glad that uh, Stewart gave it his uh, his okay. Um, and I plan to vote yes, and if needed, to speak to it uh, at a town meeting. Um, I was really impressed by the strength of your commitment to preserve this historic Hadley building. And I really think that that is to be commended most strongly. Um, and anything that our committee can do to help you, I think, um, uh, I think I'm hearing a consensus um, around support for your project. Uh, my biggest concern is that it's it, it's so much paperwork and so complicated. Um, it's very hard for a small business owner to do this on your own. And so I would like to make an amendment proposal to give you an extra $5,000 so you can hire someone to help you through the morass of state paperwork. Um, and I would like to open that up to the committee and see what people think. Because uh, 
that would make it a lot easier for you to meet these rather stringent requirements that we're putting on you. Um, my second thought was that, um, you know, the, the, the payback uh, clause in the agreement should is too long for 10 years, and I would support reducing it to three years um, because I think that's long enough to show your obvious goodwill. Um, so with Mary's permission, I would like to throw that out and see what people think. Well, first of all, Andy, thanks for the comments. Um, no, you weren't too uh, strict on me. Like I told Mary in some of our calls, I sell vodka for a living. There's a thousand of me, a thousand people like me going around selling vodka. And, hey, we need another vodka. Like we need a hole in our head. I hear every day. So I get a lot of no's. I get a lot of uh, doors closed, but if you're passionate about something and you care about it, you kind of plow through anyway. So I appreciate those comments. And I do, I care about this building, um, seeing it maintained as it is. I've tried to do that. And again, I wish they had uh, a few million in the back of my pocket to make it the shining uh, property. I'd love, love, love it to be, but in the meantime, we'll, we'll make it as nice as we can. So I appreciate all your comments. Um. I like the idea of the 5,000 um, extra for, this is to put together the historic preservation restriction. Is that correct, Andy? That's the idea. Yeah. And, and you know- would that also help document, doesn't he have to meet the the guidelines with any of his- The interiors, yes. Yeah. He, the um, Secretary of the Interior's standards for rehabilitation as well. And, and Paul's received those and has written through those. Um, one, one thing is some, do we need both the historic preservation restriction, which means nobody in the future can, you know, tear the building down, can make big changes to the way it looks. Um, and also the, the, um, paying the funds back, um, you know, say within three years, I mean, do we need both? And, and part of, um, you know, it does add value to the building. So Paul did it up and quickly sold it, you know, it, but on the other hand, Hadley is getting that preservation restriction, which is preserving the public benefit of the way the building looks far into the future. So I, you know, not a, a lot of towns don't do both. Um, some do, depending on what the project is. And, and part of it is, would that make a difference with it passing town meeting more likely or not too? I mean, that's another... Um, I mean, Mary, I have no problem. I mean, I don't, again, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, but uh, both those things seemed uh, reasonable uh, okay. things to put on this deal. So All right. I have no well, problem with them. It would be a grand agreement with the, with the town. Um, Ray or Denise, do you want to add some more comments? And there's one thing I think Andy on the... Um, across the street there with the church and the CPA funds. I think a lot of these documents, <clears throat> again, were already written up. And so it's kind of, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but maybe a lot of copy and pasting with the previous agreement from the other steeple. That's for the grant agreement will definitely be some copying and pasting. And it was actually revised even more for the Golden Court windows The the town attorney had gone, gone through and made more changes. So um, so that should be pretty, pretty quick to put together. But the historic preservation um, is a little more involved, and that's where. And again, it's another document to. And there's one, Denise. You said that one was done up for North Hadley Hall, but wasn't actually used. That the attorney had looked at, or. Um, um, no, it it was drawn up, but it wasn't approved by the Massachusetts Historical Commission. Okay. Um, so it's all on the town to police it, really. So, but the document was drawn up to be used as a guideline or? Yeah. Um, the, the reason that the Mass Historical Commission didn't approve it and like take it under their umbrella um, was because so much language had been changed. So mm -hmm. I think it probably would make more sense to start with it the like standard for historical preservation restriction and then figure it out with town council from there. And I, I don't really know how much that costs the town to work with town council. And I don't know how much it will cost Paul. So sorry, I'm not useful with that information. 
I thought I would quick summarize just for the recordings. Um, you know, we aren't, not everybody watches our meetings, but it seems to be about 30 people do. So I thought I should, <laughs> I should sort of quick summarize what the Hadley um, Historical Commission wrote and what Stuart wrote just for um, having that down. And um, Diana West sent one from the Historical Commission and um, they're very much in support of the building. Um, St. John the Apostle Church, more colloquially known. Mary, we just lost your audio. Oh, really? Oh, no, I'm still hearing her. Okay. So it might be Andy. Still can't hear you. Andy, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's I, me. Mary, it's I can my hear you. computer. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Mary, I can hear you. That's all right. I'm glad you spoke up. Yeah. Um, Known as St. John's was the first Roman Catholic church in the town of Hadley. Before it was built in 1902, Hadley's Catholics attended church in nearby communities as well as in private homes. As new immigrant populations began to call Hadley home, they needed a house of worship. St. John's was the first religious structure in Hadley that wasn't dedicated to congregationalism, representing the growing diversifying population. Um, the church was the first of this design to be built by Toomey and Shea. Later, the same plans were used for the chapel at the Old Mercy Hospital in Springfield, for a church in Sheffield, Mass., for a Polish church in Worcester, and for the Polish and Ukrainian churches in South Deerfield. So not only was St. John's the first Catholic church in Hadley, it was also a trendsetter for other Catholic churches in the surrounding area. Um, and then it closed the doors in 2000. Um, when St. John's was consolidated with the um, Most Holy Redeemer. And um, and then it sat empty until Paul Koza purchased the property and repurposed it to be a thriving business, V1 Vodka. And not only celebrates Had V1 Vodka not only celebrates Hadley's agricultural heritage, but Mr. Kozob's and Hadley's Polish heritage as well. Large Polish immigration population at the turn of the 20th century was instrumental in eventually leading to have a Catholic parish in Hadley. Um, the Hadley Historical Commission recognizes that it would be unprecedented to, get, unprecedented to give public CPA funds to a private business. According to the Community Preservation Coalition, CPA funds may be able to fund a project on private property, but only if the property is advancing a public purpose. In regards to V1 Vodka, the business advances Hadley's agriculture and the historic preservation of St. John's Church. We are in support of the CPA funds being distributed if Paul Koza agrees to placing a preservation restriction on the property. This will ensure that the historic integrity of the property is maintained in the future should Mr. Koza ever sell it. And then Stuart, who's um, the director of the Massachusetts Coalition, um, Community Preservation Coalition, which we pay dues to, said, this is an interesting project. As you might expect, we don't see too many commercial historic buildings apply for CPA funding, but it is certainly allowable. CPA has no rules on who can receive funding. The key is that there has to be a public benefit to any use of municipal money on private property. This is part of the state's anti-aid amendment. Um, and we, uh, we should look at what the public benefit for each of the items is in the budget. And we should, and he agrees using only CPA funds to do restoration of the exterior, since that is what the public sees. He doesn't suggest using it to do the ramp, um, not because it's not part of the original building, but because the public doesn't benefit by using the ramp. Um, and to require the grant agreement and uh, historic preservation. And that he does... Um, suggest having a grant agreement funds to be repaid to the town if the building is sold within a period of time. Um, so those those comments fall right in with what you guys have been saying. Um, personally, I, I am in support of this as well. I think that um, the outside is something that is part of the the fabric of the town and has been and and it is important for several reasons it's certainly i think important to many people that went there um but it's also important in in hadley's history i want to pull up the um the figures um let me share the screen here and yeah i also think it's important to have the debate you know, to 
This is a serious proposal about an important building and for town meeting to discuss it and decide where its priorities are. Yeah. So the bid, what Paul had sent, um, his bids included interior work um, and the exterior work was window frames, tower restoration, the roof, um, ramp and side stairs, and then the gutters for 152,000. Um, if we do the, if we do this and take out the ramp, it's window frames, tower restoration, roof gutters would be 120,400. And then if we added in another 5,000, um, for the historic preservation, it'd be 125,400. Paul, does that sound, um, like what you're looking for for the exterior? Yes. Yes, it does. And with that, the town gets the historic preservation um, and also, um, you know, uh, you know, it would be at least three years before it would be sold. Um, any questions on this or any? Well, well, I think I think, Mary, technically he could sell it in these three years. Right. It's just that the town gets its money back out of the proceeds. Exactly. Yeah. Is there um? Is there anything from Stuart about, you know, where did that 10 year figure that we started with come from? Was that, you know, he, he questioned it. He said he doesn't know how many is the right amount. I, um, that I threw that out. I, I had seen one where a town had done, um, of, a lot of money put into a historic building that I think the historical society in that town did, and they had a 20 year. Um, and I know when we talked with the people at North Hadley hall, when they were considering it, they were like, well, does it depreciate? Does it? And it's like, you know, a lot of, a lot of these repairs might need to be done again in 20 years. So, <laughs> you know, it definitely seems too long and, um, and 10 years for 120,000 seems a long time too. Um, I would just I would just offer for consideration might if we made it five years instead of three. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I only say that because I'm anticipating that Paul's going to have to defend this at town meeting. And if there are if there's any negative uh, sentiments, then they could lock on to, to the three years. And five years is more moderate, um, and they could argue that it shows more uh, commitment, which I don't think Paul needs to show us more commitment. But I'm just trying to think of ways to strengthen his argument at town meeting. And I had proposed five years when we were talking last time. I'd said ten, and and you know, it, it, when I saw Stewart's, it's like you know that does seem a bit long. One. One thought I had is that I would start the clock when the funds were paid because, um, you know, if we started on day one, the work might not even be done for two or three years. Um, so when the funds are paid out, you know, have the clock start on, on that time. So, um, I, I would be fine with five years if that's the consensus. Paul, what do you think? Do you think, does it matter to you 10 years, five no, years? Ray, Ray really does. I mean, again, uh, no one knows what the future holds, but I've already been there a decade. And as we all know, the older we get, time goes by faster. Time, time <laughs> really, flies, it's, exactly. It's like, yeah. So really, really five years, three years to me, I think, I think it was Andy that suggested five is kind of the middle of five. I'm, I'm fine with five. Very good. Okay. I, I like your idea of the payout. I mean of the 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 clock doesn't start ticking until the the money has been paid out. Right. Yeah. Um Okay, so I'll I'll make a motion that the uh grant agreement has to include the uh payback in full for five years. As secretary, I'm going to suggest that we start with a motion to support this and then amend it once we. 
Well, once, I think once, once we oh. get a second, right? I okay. we aren't we aren't we aren't supporting the proposal because the proposal was for the two hundred and sixty-two thousand. So, so then we start with, with modifying the proposal, and then we can add amendments, right? Well, or we say, you know, we I I mean I would. Well, how does this sound? I make a motion that we approve one hundred twenty thousand four hundred or one hundred twenty-five thousand four hundred for one forty-five. Russell Street, which will include the work on the window frames, the tower restoration, the roof, the gutters, and five thousand for um, an a historic preservation um, ex expense, and that um, the there'll be a historic preservation put on the property, and that if the property were to be sold within five years of when these funds were paid out. Um, the funds would be repaid to the town. That sounds good. I would just add the word restriction when. Okay, you preservation say adding, restriction. Yeah, the historic preservation restriction. And I didn't say who it has to be with because, like, as Denise pointed out, where it might be the town, it might be the state, um, depending on how it ends up. If that's your motion, I would offer a second. Did you mention the uh, grant agreement? I subsequent think so. <laughs> to the grant agreement. Okay. If I didn't, it's in there. <laughs> okay. With a great. grant agreement that spells out um, a historic preservation is required and the funds would be paid for uh, historic preservation restriction is required and that funds would be paid back um, if the property was sold within five years of when the CPA funds were paid. So with a motion and a second, we're open for discussion, which we may have already concluded, but I just technically should say that we are open for any any other thoughts. Good. Thank you. Until Mary calls for a vote. Well, let's do the, um, the uh, repay for five years. That's what I'm suggesting. Yeah, I think that's what Mary said. Yeah. Five Hopefully. years from the date the funds are paid. Yes. Out. Okay. Does anyone have any other changes or or you could do five years from from when it's approved at town meeting because because that would actually might turn out to actually be three years, but right. Depends whether we want to do what's easiest for Paul or is better for us. It is easier to have a set date if it's the date approved, because that's yeah. there's no question of you know. I would support. It's 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 hard to figure out when payout. You know, is it the first dollar paid or is it the last dollar paid? So yeah. it, it'd be easier to go with the rule. Okay. So I, I would support five years from the the right. town approval. I'll amend it to five years from town meeting approval. And that all takes a while. The preservation takes a while. Restriction takes a while. The grant agreement takes a little bit of time um, with the town. But um, and this one, you don't have to wait for the new fiscal year. As soon as it's approved at town meeting, things can start. And we know that costs are not going down, so I'm sure that uh, Paul would like to move this along as quickly as possible. Should it be approved? All right, Paul, you'll have to work out with um, Town Hall the spending of the 5000 to help you uh, move the process along because we've never done this before. So you're a trailblazer in, in, that, okay, in that regard. Okay. But we can, we can help you with it, you know, if there's uh, hiccups. Thank you. The, um, Paul, there'll be an account that once... If, if if I should say this is approved at um, town meeting, then the hundred twenty five thousand four hundred that's reserved in an account that'll say um, one forty five Russell Street or St John's Realty Trust, um, and then you'll have that account number and any they re, you know when you have a bill come in, then it needs to be approved by um, the town administrator. 
um, and you'll put the account number on it and then it'll get drawn down out of that 125, 400 until there's no money left or until the project's done. If there's extra money, then we'll take it back. Um, after checking with you, if you need more money, then you can't go more than this without coming back with a request for more. Um, yeah, I, did, I, I was at the town hall maybe two months ago and I spoke with the town manager and the treasurer about the process a little bit okay. about what was happening with the uh, churches across the street. So thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor, um, say aye. And I want to, I want to, I'll call people by name because um, I don't see, I can't see everyone's hands. So Mark Dunn. Aye. In Lisa. favor. Aye. Denise? Aye. Andy Klopacki? Aye. Andy Morris Friedman? Yes. And Ray? Um, Ray Michkowski? Yeah, Ray Michkowski, are you still thinking or are you? Yes. Yes. Okay. And Mary Thayer, yes. All yes. right. So it's okay. unanimous. Ye yes, you're voting yes or yes, you're still thinking. <laughs> He did the thumbs up. So okay. seven zero. Uh, no. I'm <laughs> um, All right, Paul. Congratulations. We 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 recommend it, and since we recommend it, it will be on the town warrant. Um, it will go through the select board. Will make a vote to recommend, um, and the finance committee too. So those and all those results show up at, on the town warrant, but it will be on the town warrant. I'm not quite sure. I don't know if anyone knows. They haven't set the date officially, but it's usually about the third Thursday in October or so. So um, you'll need to make a presentation for the um, 125,400, you know, talk about it a little bit at town meeting. And um, we'll certainly have some comments to add as well as needed. Um, I did write up a suggested Warren article that, um, let me just pop it over here. Um, that maybe we, well, we, our committee will discuss. Um, let me share the screen. I, um, article whatever number, um, 145 Russell Street, former St. John's Church, to see if the town will vote to transfer 6550 6, from the Community Preservation, Preservation Act Historic Set-Aside Fund, because that's the balance in that fund. And then the difference between that and the 125400 um, from the Community Preservation Act designated fund, undesignated fund. Um, for a total of 125400 um, to the St. John's Realty Trust for repairs to the building at 145 Russell Street, formerly St. John's Church. Mary, are you saying 145 is 146? Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get that right. <laughs> yeah, I think um, earlier you said 135, so... Mary, can I make yeah, a suggestion? One, four, six. To yeah. the exterior of the Mary? building. Mary? Yes. It, are you open to suggestions? Of course. Uh, instead of for repairs to the exterior, I would say for preservation of the exterior. Okay. Preservation. preservation. Yeah. And then... The list of repairs, I don't think you have to you have to list. That's okay. gonna be that's gonna be in the grant agreement. All right. Well it unless you think that will help I, I think shorter is better, really. Questions. For marked articles. All right. All right. right. That's my opinion. You know, it's so interesting. I've been reading other towns and a lot of them go into a lot of detail. And so I think that's why I added on some more. Let me read it through and then let's, we can absolutely then I modify it. Um, 
work to follow the Secretary of the Interior standards of rehabilitation, a grant agreement from the select board that includes a requirement that a state that a historic preservation restriction Um, be placed on the property will be required before work can start. Another requirement will be if the property is sold within five years of the the CPA funds approved awarded awarded yeah or approved okay. yeah. 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 approval approval of this article something like that. The funds will yeah. be returned to the town. Said funds to be expended under the direction. Whoops. Of Whoops. Oh, let's go back. Yeah. Another, Another requirement would be if the property sold within five years. Okay, okay I'm sorry. Go on. Yes. Um, uh, the funds will be returned to the town. Said funds to be expended under the direction of the town administrator within three years of I, three years of the date of town meeting approval. Any unspent funds will automatically return to the foregoing Community Preservation Act fund um, by that date. Um, <laughs> So he can always ask for an extension beyond the three years. Absolutely. Yes. And we talked last time about putting three years instead of two, just because it just seems like we have to ask for an awful lot of extensions for for property, you know, for restoration type work. And it's not run of the mill work steeple. There's right. probably a limited market to yeah. solicit bids from. Um what do you think? Should it be shorter? I mean, I mean, I added the Secretary of Interior Standards. Part of this, too, Andy, I was thinking about approval at town meeting, thinking that people may be more comfortable feeling like they know what they're voting for as opposed to just exterior repairs. That I, I, I would throw my suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say that if you know those people who do their homework and read the draft before the meeting, knowing more might uh, might avoid any vitriol or questions. So yeah, yeah, I, I agree with including it, Mary. It it uh, it's it seems more inclusive and uh, and often uh you, you know it. In this case, I think more information is better uh, for this. Yeah, can we put in the agree. amount from the uh, unde undesignated fund so the article's complete? Yeah, I'll I'll do the math, but I'm also going to put in here. Um, that um does somebody have a calculator to do <laughs> to do the math i think it's something like 118 850 that's off the top of my head i will double check yeah. <laughs> all right good paul is that that's what we're looking at i hope if you have any comments you're we're welcome to hear them too um Another requirement of a grant agreement. I like it. I think it I think it just spells out a lot of what people would be voting for. Um, good. All right. Can we stop sharing? So Paul, from here on out, it's all politics. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, you or your representative need to go to these select board and finance committee meetings. Uh, it's a lot harder for them to say no if you're sitting right there. Uh, a couple of old ladies who used to go to the church come to the meeting. That'll also help line up people to speak to it at town meeting. You know, don't have them wait. Line up right on the microphone when it comes up and um, use your passion to convince people that this is a good expenditure of funds. Thank you for that suggestion. All right. Well, we're going to continue on our meeting. Paul, you're more than welcome to stay, but you certainly can <laughs> sign out as well. Yeah, I just want I just want to say one last thing. Who who wrote up that historical preservation part, Mary? Um the one I the letter that I read yeah diana yeah. west she's chair of the historic commission okay yeah i just wanted to publicly think that was a very uh very nicely written powerful thing and even i learned m more about the property <laughs> i own so i appreciate that was thank you diane yeah. 
Well, Denise can pass that on because she's on the Historic Commission and she may have inputted too. I mean, Diana signed it, but it may have been a... That was a team yes, thank, effort. That was a team thank effort. you, Denise. Yeah, that was really, really well done. Was I appreciate it. Yeah. It might be a good idea to ask if you can release that letter to the newspaper. And uh, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, Denise, but would uh, anybody from the Historical Commission be willing to um, speak in support at town meeting? Yeah, somebody will do it, either me or Diana or Courtney. Great. 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 All right, Paul, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Right. Have a good, good luck. Have a great Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Bye bye. Good luck at the biggie. <laughs> All right. Um, next, we're I'm going to turn it over to Andy. He had come up with some questions about things to think about since we had just the one application. It seemed like a good opportunity. Um, and I just before we do that, I just even though we paid $248 for legal ads, <laughs> I made them really short. Um, I feel good about having fulfilled that responsibility, even though one per not one person, you know, came on to hear any public comment, but at least, you know, at least we did it for the first time in a while. So, all right, Andy, it's over to you. Um, this, uh, the lack of applicants gives us an opportunity to talk about the committee, about um, uh, questions of the new people, um, expanding people's roles, um, talking about the process, uh, some of our favorite projects, um, ways to make things better in the future. Uh, and so I um, came up with sort of a list of starter questions for the discussion. Um, it's not a test. It's not school. You don't have to answer all of them. Um, uh, but I think we could have a very interesting discussion. But frankly, I need a five minute break. So okay. can, can we take like a five minute break and come back at uh, 750? Well, 755 is an eight minute break. That's is that fine. okay, Mary? That's absolutely fine. Um, I just want to remind people that you may want to mute because even if we can't see you anymore, we can hear you and the recording can hear you. And um, oh yes, so, D we'll... don't let what happened to Edwin Matusko happen to you. Exactly. Good. Good reminder. And and stop your video. Every mic is live. <laughs> okay. See you at uh, at five of. So if you're tuning in right now, watching this in a recording, we are taking a five minute break. Please stand by.
Hey, Ray. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Fine. <laughs> The same people that were early to the meeting or <laughs> early to the break. <laughs> so, Mary, I just emailed you my whole list that I had already written up about the questions. Okay. Uh, because I can't, I've just got my cell phone with me, so I can't, I don't know how to flip back and forth. Oh, okay. Let me take a look here. It, it takes a while to come. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. You easily yeah. emailed, right? Yeah. Yeah. One of these days I'll become a, a Zoom master, but that day <laughs> is not the day. <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time to write down your thoughts. And um, I'll be glad to read them. We just got Zoom, you know, down solid after three years of COVID and the uh, our, our employer is now trying to change this over to Microsoft Teams. I'm like, uh. <laughs> I've had meetings on Team. They seem to have a few issues. <laughs> Every time I turn on my computer, no matter what I'm doing on my computer, the Teams window comes up. Yeah. I'm going, I'm not on Teams. I'm watching Hulu. <laughs> you can't fix that. <clears throat> We're all here. I all think. right. Except I'm reading the chat. We need, we need yeah, to I, I, I put some of the questions in the chat. Oops, Andy, and then, and then we I need thought, to I thought It's good to start with a really easy, positive one. So um, what is the project that you were most enthusiastic about that was funded by Happy CPA? And what was it about the project that resonated with you? Uh, so my favorite project was the uh, old maps. Uh, which I didn't even know about. Uh, I was so excited to see them for the first time and to take them to the library. Uh, I also got to team up with Mark, who picked them up. And uh, besides a little hiccup of my being thrown off the CPA in the middle of the project, it went off without a hitch. <laughs> um, Thank you to Alan. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, and you should go see the maps because they're in the library and they're totally awesome. And hopefully, with any luck, they'll be around for another 350 years. <laughs> that was the deerskin maps, right? Yeah. 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 The, um, you had them shipped up to Williamstown. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They gave us a free tour of the museum. Yeah. And we saw Whistler's mother. It was great. Wow. She's, she's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So, your favorite project? It can be from before you were on the committee if you just have a favorite project. I mean, there's no right or wrong answers. Where's the list of projects? <laughs> yeah, I can give it to you. <laughs> yeah, there's like 90 of them. Right? I know. I, I, I've been on this long enough. There's there's too many for me to pick out. <laughs> well, on the town website, if you go to community preservation, you can look at all the projects that CPA ever did. It's really interesting. Well, I'll go out there on one that was um, recent and um, uh, I don't know if I'd say controversial, but it was testing the limits. And that was, uh, was it phase two of the school? I mean, that's the benefits that's going to give to the community and, you know, those of us that like to go watch the games and, and you know, that will, that was a long time coming. So I was excited by that and to see that it would make it more accessible with the perimeter um, walkway that was would meet ADA does. Yeah. I like ex accessibility. For me, it was um, John Gennadik's mural in the library, which, you know, is is a smaller 
project, but, you know, both because I admire the artist so much and Teddy Michikowski's involvement with all of that and his love for the painting and then just how much it represents various stages of Hadley's history and that and that it's on display in the library and just fits in there so well. And also it's an example of something that would never have gotten done if there weren't CPA funds. Yeah. So I like it for that reason too. My favorite. Oh, Sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, go. My favorite project, because because I represent housing, my favorite project uh, was approved before I got on the board, but has just been completed. And that's the Golden Court Windows. And I cannot tell you what it's meant for these elderly and non-elderly disabled people to have windows they can actually open and close. And I, I don't, if you get a chance, uh, just drive through Golden Court. It, it has improved the appearance, number one. But number two, we can open and close the windows. It's meant everything. The tenants are very, very happy with this. And I don't know if you all realize, but getting capital improvement money from the state, it's chronically underfunded. And these buildings, uh, 1961 and... Uh, Decades of deferred maintenance. Um, the governor is quite interested in proving affordable housing and community housing. So we may see a great deal of improvements. We already have seen some funding improvements, but the CPA money allowed this to happen. And um, the folks are very appreciative. But do come by, do drive through. The appearance is amazing. It's really improved. I agree. I just want to add a quick note onto that <clears throat> while we're talking about the windows. I run probably twice a week <coughs> on the um, rail trail. And I, I, I'm, it's like the first two times I, I, I did it, I saw the sign, the CPA funds sign out there. Yeah. And I don't know <laughs> if it got moved when they mowed lawns, but I was like, we paid for the rail trail? <laughs> it's, it's, it's supposed to be golden court and but it looks like where it's placed you know maybe it should go on the other side of golden court or something but it, it i was like we paid for the rail trail well we we couldn't we couldn't put it on the other side of the road because okay. that's private property okay so we had to put it where the kind of where it looks like it, it's actually the golden court property okay that's where we could put it it just happens to look like <laughs> it was the you know some that we did something for the rail trail but yeah we had a very limited didn't we mary about where we could Lisa put and it. i walked around and and the town said because of the town bylaws signed by you know sign restrictions we couldn't put it right close to the road so we had to put yeah. it back a little bit so and Reese's has done it or going to do it, bring it over to the high school to put it the fields. And they the, they said that they'd put it out somewhere where it's not in the way, but it's visible. So we yeah, did it on Friday morning. Oh, thank you very much. So they, they were expecting that. And so it'll, yeah. you'll see it again. <laughs> yeah. So Ray and Denise, do you have a favorite project? <laughs> Go ahead, Denise. <laughs> um, well, Mark took mine. I think that the school project is really important because it's a real investment in our young people. Um, and I was really excited to be a part of that project, but since it was already taken, um, I'll say that I think it's really cool that CPA has supported so many APR projects um, mm -hmm. because this is a right to farm community and um, making sure that agriculture can thrive here in Hadley is really important. Amen. Yeah. yeah. How about the other side of the coin, which were the projects that you either weren't 100% sure about or you weren't sure should be sent to town meeting or that you actually voted no? Um, I guess for me, it was the uh, Northampton Courthouse and Smith Charities, where they came to us asking you know, for CPA money. 
and uh, we weren't so sure about it, but we let it go to town meeting. And uh, shockingly, the Smith Charities one passed because a bunch of people whose kids got money from them said, you ought to pass it. And so it, it passed. Um, but the courthouse went down in flames. Why did we get money to Northampton? <laughs> you know, so I think that was the one that was hmm. the most problematic for me. Who would like to go next? Risa, I did get your answer. Do you want me to read it? So you can oh, yeah. Go, well, I think I just, I remembered what I answered because I read it during the break. So, but yeah, go ahead. You said, um, only a year on the committee, but so far the inaction on Russell School is concerning to me. Perhaps an action will lead to more brainstorming for solutions, um, crisis becoming opportunity. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'm diplomatic, not often. <laughs> Anyone else have a problem uh, uh, with any of the proposals? Mine was definitely Russell School. That was a lot of work, a lot of meetings, a lot of time, a lot of contention. And it just, there wasn't a good answer. I think the answer we came up with was the right step to figure out what the next step is. Um, I really do, but that was definitely the most difficult for what I've been through. Yeah, I and I agree. <laughs> I think after all the work that the proponents put into it, I, I think that they felt really kicked yeah. by having it changed at, at the 11th hour. And so that was unfortunate how that played out. But it did keep it alive. Andy, you have one? Contentious? Well, one that, you know, you either weren't sure about or less enthusiastic about or... Well, it's really easy to pile on to the uh, Russell School one, but I'm uh, uh, particularly given the, uh, you know, short long-term concerns that I had there, I'm quickly running through. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I know Zaturka Park came back several, several times and at the, you know, I was going to actually use that since the, uh, um, the ball, the uh, Hopkins fields were one of my bigger supporters and then APR, as Denise said, so I was going to jump to Zaturka Park, even though it is a pocket park. Uh, and then that had to keep coming back. And, you know, the big lesson that I came away from uh, having been involved in that was the, uh, uh, the length of time that it can take, particularly for municipally driven projects uh, to come to fruition. Lots of people do a lot of work in the background, do a lot of study, and uh, only have a few minutes to present it on town meeting floor. Uh, and and it's hard to uh, necessarily convince people within the short term uh, window get past any initial negative reaction. And there was a, uh, you know, um, and because of that length of time that these these projects come before you, sometimes your expense windows just change, uh, particularly in this environment. So, uh, you know, like the approval for Mr. Kozum tonight, he's got to get that out there quick because the numbers that he's looking at, you know, particularly these day this day and age, are uh, you know, most a lot of contractors only guarantee a thirty days uh, based on materials. So, uh, one of the the things that I would look going forward is trying to, uh, like with the DPW project coming up, is to put um, a, a basis in there uh, to help cover these um, rapidly changing cost structures. So that they don't need to keep coming back, keep coming back just to, and you know, the, we we meet twice a year, town meeting meets twice a year. And uh, you know, a lot can happen in those uh, that period. If you miss the window, you're looking at close to a year, and, and that that uh, cost basis can really go up. So that isn't in a specific example, but it to me it underlies a lot of these projects that we need to rethink the approach, uh, what we're going to try to continue to su uh, suggest to them that they plan for cost increases. And the Hopkins Fields 
figure was higher than the figure today that the and the study had done. Here's what the cost is today. Here's what the cost is in a year. And they knew they were going to be at least a year. So they did ask for more um, because of that inflation figure. And But I'm not sure they knew how much <laughs> it was going to go up. But Well, I sat on the first uh, Hopkins committee and then the, uh, uh, did some time on the second Hopkins field committee. And I think okay. the first number that came up was 680,000, somewhere in that range. And then the next number was uh, just around a million. And, you know, look where we are now. Right. Um, and so sometimes kicking the can down the road really doesn't, is not a cost saving str um, strategy. Right. Anyone else have a project they want to talk about on the downside? I guess I have to mention the Goodwin Memorial. That's another one that just can't seem to get out of the gates. So. I'm hoping that we can somehow infuse something into restoring that and making that accessible. You know, they, they did get one part of it out for bid and nobody bid. So it's, um, uh, it wasn't just a totally ignored thing. They've been working on it. So it's, it's kind of now because the figures are so old that they're working off of, I think they're deciding whether or not to keep going in piecemeal or try to do a more comprehensive study. That that building is is slated to become town offices. Is that right? That was the next rendition. Yes, they need some more space in town hall. So that was that's the that's the more easily gotten ready yeah. building, as I understand it. Hadley Media is still in there at this point, right? So um, yeah, upstairs. And, and and but you know there was one suggestion, and it's look, staring at all of us right in the face, and that is the background behind Mark, and that is the town hall pillars. Mm. Oh, that that's the bid was awarded, and the work's supposed to start in three weeks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> First, the town hall pillars. Next, world peace. <laughs> Yeah, um, got some good updates, and the um, yeah, and the the study for Russell School was put out to bid, and they've had over thirty inquiries for bid packages. So hopefully they'll get at least a few bids. It's due like October twelfth, so that's moving along as well. Well, Andy so kind of brought us to the to the next point. I want to skip over the committee's reputation and just get right to the process part. Um. You know, the committee's working well, I think. The money's getting out. The projects are slowly starting. Mary is totally on top of things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not, uh, um, you know, rummaging through the morgue to get committee members, uh, like so many other committees in town. Um, but there's always room for improvement, right? Denise so, is laughing. Yeah. So, um, so what do people think? What's the what's the low hanging fruit in terms of making our committee work better, uh, more efficiently, et cetera, et cetera? What did I say, Mary? I said something about that. Oh, um, what question are we on? What um, what would you propose as long term goals? For well, how can I'm still in the process, the process so can't think of a way to improve other than a tutorial requirement updated yearly, similar to the ethics training? I've learned so much from listening to other committee members, but wish I knew more about the rules. Committee members could eventually become ambassadors for CPA to the public and offer presentations at the library, senior center, etc. There is a boot camp that the coalition uh -oh. has that is excellent. It's like an hour or two. And it's one of their videos and they just kind of take you through start to finish on a lot of CPA stuff. And I sat through it when they had it live, but they, they recorded it. And, um, and I, it, that's one way to find out more about the committee rules and stuff. Yeah. I was wondering if we could do something like maybe annually right after any new members are appointed, if we could do some kind of a training session and perhaps even offer it in person to have a, like a potluck after it to kind oh, that'd of be great. to build some, uh, you know, community within our, because otherwise we're all in our 
Zoom spaces. <laughs> I, I uh, would propose more signage for the projects that are in place, um, more and better signage out there, and also um, a brief two minutes at annual town meeting um, to review project status of what, you know, uh, what has been approved, what has been completed, and what's upcoming, and not focus really, uh, you know, so much on the stuff that's on the warrant, but really talk about all the pieces that are are in play because the only I think the only other time we really talk about it after the warrant article is during clawback, so it it might be um, part of the town meeting just to have a a quick two minutes whether that's done by uh, you know should obviously be be done by the committee not necessarily the moderator or the administrator but um, you know just having a, a quick review hey this these projects finished up this one after three years was. You know, finally approved. We're moving ahead. That that type of thing, and try to keep it brief, but just a status update of all of the projects in there um, that are currently open or recently uh, closed. You saying do that? At, you're saying do that at town meeting? Yeah, town meeting. Just just to, you know, yeah. before we get into the into the warrant articles, you know, they usually have a little bit of a state of the union done by the administrator right, right, right. and then um you know there's a you know recap by the treasurer uh then try to fit somewhere in in the playbill to put um just a you know status update on on cpa projects how much money that the, uh, the town is committed to these projects to see that their cpa dollars are at work and i mean it's it's great to reach out to the people that are beyond those that normally attend town meeting but those that normally do attend town meeting are the ones that are most involved so it's also good for them to to to, to see um you know uh the the fruits of their effort. that's a great idea i i had a slide at the annual town meeting that um was pretty much showing the the figures um and it would have but i like the idea of doing that saying here's from each category here's the total and then here's of the reserved funds these are being used for these projects and um at, the moderator forgot to pause <laughs> and let me do my spiel so it didn't get done but it was yeah. all set to go um just more more bullet points than than the right. numbers but the you know just to yeah, keep it keep it Promote. simple because we're we're going to glaze over numbers real quick when we're going through the budget. But yeah, well, it was you know to say we have two million available for these five four projects we're voting on is you know, but um, one one thought I had too was um, would it? Well, this gets under the goals, but I'd love to. We've you know. 8,000 of our 16,000 acres in Hadley is farmland. And, you know, I'm. it used to be 2,400 was preserved. I know that figure is higher. I just don't know what the new figure is. Would it be at all helpful to try to do like an APR info um, meeting and for farmers or landowners that owned farmland? Um, I don't know if, you know, and have someone from the state APR program come and, and talk about it. I, Denise, do you have a sense if that might be something that would help get people thinking more about APR or feel like they might want to look into it more? Um, well, they have APR meetings like all the time. Oh, okay, um, good. But maybe like the local CPA should be going to those existing meetings. That's a good idea. There was a training one I went to maybe two years ago that was Conservation Commission staff person and um, myself and a couple people from the town hall. And it was really helpful to understand more of what it what it entailed. Um, but I'm glad to hear their comments. So maybe that's not that's not something we need to do. But yeah, how do we how do we promote it more? We wrote this, you know, the the annual meeting, um, the the report, the annual report last year, you know, worked so hard on the, we all approved the letter, you know, from the, the page from the CPA. I sent it in too early to Jennifer so that when she went to look for it, she couldn't find it. And then I sent it to her again. And she said, 
all right, I'm sending everything in. And she sent it all in, but still didn't include ours. So it wasn't in the annual report, which was too bad. And when I, I questioned her, she goes, what? So she, you know, she just hit the wrong one, I think. But um, so, but that, you know, that's another way that we at least get some information out there. One of the changes I would recommend is um, more action from us as committee members to come up with interesting projects. Hmm. Yeah. You know, we don't have to just wait for them to come to us. We can approach people. Uh, I've been trying to get the farm museum to come to us for a grant for many years now and um, without success. Um, but uh, uh, also the Porter Phelps Huntington House Foundation is going to be coming to us. And we went to that meeting with them. So to reach out to those kinds of groups. Uh, and also maybe we should think about doing a presentation to uh, other town departments um, about where they might be interested in taking advantage of what the CPA has to offer. Um, those of you who are on two committees, you represent us to your committee very ably, but there's a lot of town departments and committees who really don't know much about us, except for our old reputation, which was we say no to everything, um, which we don't. We don't say no to everything. You know, we kind of bend over backwards to get people to yes, um, which I really like about our committee. You know, a lot of committees, they hoard their money. You know, and the, the less the less they spend, the more successful they think they are. Uh, but we've really done a lot of good, you know, and uh, and we should definitely keep keep going. That end, if if we get this administrative help and we get caught up with uh, with minutes and there's extra time, which I doubt there will be. It might be nice to enhance our um, previous CPA projects um, link on our website to maybe make it a little more of a gallery. It would be kind of neat to do just like a little, like a, you know, one photo and some bullet points for each project. And we could maybe, you know, if if they had the time, you could start with, with recent ones and if they had extra time they could in the future they could work backwards to start you know kind of a little gallery rag rag you know and a reminder of what this committee in its different memberships has accomplished over the years because i'm you know, some, take I, some I, pictures I, of uh, uh hopkins field now yeah. Before, you got, the before, after, yeah. you got the before, yeah. now you got the during, and then you got the after. We can certainly come up with shots from Zaturka Park. But, yeah. uh, there are some, and um, there's the the there's a few APRs. There's the there's one PDF on there, right? That has yeah yeah. No, there's five or six photos. Yeah, yeah, and um, but absolutely, give me more suggestions for. I'm I'm going to take them at Golden Court and add that. Um, but I did like one of the cemeteries and said, you know, repairs done in all five cemeteries and um, the pavilion. And, um, and that that before shot of Hopkins was after six hundred thousand dollars. So it's it's not really a before shot. It's just that was the, the fix up of the, the turf to begin with. So that was a. Like a four hundred thousand and a two hundred thousand job to get it to look like that. So. <laughs> you know, I I just remembered something in terms of the the trainings. Um, Stuart of the uh, CPA Coalition is going to come out and do a training in coal rain sometime this winter. Hmm. Um, so we could definitely piggyback with that, um, and all go, or some of us could go, or you could go if you wanted to go. Um, uh, so I'll definitely keep the committee posted to see if you're interested in that. Yeah. No, but if any suggestions for the website are most um, appreciated. And um, if you 
you know, for, I didn't say, I just put like a one line thing. I didn't put a bunch of bullet points. Um, but yeah, it's it just uh, running through it real quick. It, you know, a lot of it is PDFs. Um, yeah. yeah, it is. It, 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 it would be nice if, and this is not our our issue. It's more of the website design. Of just instead of having, you know, um, it, it should be able to navigate to another page rather than forcing a download link and where the link could. Be, you know, they wouldn't have to download the CPA projects PDF and then open the PDF. It'd be nice to have it yeah. page that points to it and then download yes. it if you want. Yeah. But, like if it was an HTML or a cascading styles uh, page that you could just keep scrolling down, you could keep adding to. Yeah, and, and that's not not on us. It, again, it's more of the website design. I don't, uh, you know, I don't know how pervasive it is throughout all of the website, but um, for those who peruse it, yeah, I'll look through other. I'm yeah. I mean, we've we've come a long way with the website in the past couple of years, but I think we've got, uh, you know, we've got a little ways to go. Our next Anyone week. can help with that because I'm the one that does the web. You know, I sort of wanted to add enough stuff that they put me on as, and so it's figuring it out. But no, it's great. But I I don't know how to do the other than the PDFs, and then it's keeping them current. Um, but do we even have all of our minutes uploaded? We have all of our minutes that are approved in the last three years. Um, okay. And we still have one to approve tonight. We'll do. But we are missing a few that the last couple meetings didn't get recorded. Um, and we're hoping the staff person, when we get them on board, is that can go back and do that. So okay. but we do have them. The First one in February is done. We're just missing the second one plus one or two other Russell School ones. Um, but before that, they're on there. Okay. At least for the last couple of years. Um, All right. Well, I was hoping we could uh, end this meeting before nine o'clock. Okay. Um, so we're kind of on schedule for that. Um, let's well, think of the rest of these questions and see if we have time to go through them at our next meeting. Gonna have to go um, to nine oh five now, and yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, but um, uh, I think we've covered with, actually quite a few of them, yeah, other than but, the challenges. But along with the website, Mary's been working on some uh, FAQs, which would help applicants uh, get started, and uh, she's worked pretty hard on it. And I was wondering if anybody else, maybe a pair of people, would like to. Pick it up, take it over, hammer it into shape a little bit more, and uh, we can get it up on the website. Is anybody interested in uh, picking this up? I would volunteer, oh, yeah. but I don't know enough about community preservation yet. <laughs> a lot of this stuff is available online that, you know, could be copied and pasted, consolidated, and uh, yeah, it's all public domain. Yeah, I'll help, I'll, I'll help out with whatever I can do. Mostly taking it at this point and just going through it, seeing if there's anything that you think doesn't explain it well or makes sense or if there are other questions. Um, and I, I think it's good because new people have a different perspective. And might have different questions than the yeah, one you thought of. Yeah, and I think it'll help me learn a little bit too as I <laughs> as I'm going through this. So, yeah. So, absolutely. Ray, I'm happy to work on it with you then. Okay, Great. sounds good. And um, you know, my my idea is that you know it's taken me three years to figure this much out, <laughs> and it shouldn't take somebody three years. They don't have to be on the committee to get some of these answers. So um, it's, you know, if right, there's but the, law, the law is confusing. Sometimes it's contradictory. Um, each town has wide latitude to do things differently than the next town. Um, uh, it's very confusing, you know? 
what's the difference between the three areas and where it, sometimes they overlap and sometimes they don't. And, you know, yeah. oh, you can do the outside but not the inside. You know, it's uh, uh, it does take a while to work. Yeah. And, you know, there probably should be some language on here that, you know, these, it can change, the answers can change, or, I, you know, just something like this is not like the law. This is, you know, <laughs> um, help. This is to help and maybe update it as, as needed. Um, but so how about um, Risa and Ray? Great. I mean, maybe set a goal of a month or two to just, you know, take, try to have it so we can stick it up on the website and as a pdf <laughs> and um, and and we'll we'll go from there thank you for volunteering the other thing i wanted to suggest is that you know i don't have everybody's contact information so maybe we should get names and uh emails and make sure everybody has it yeah if you want to send that to me as a secretary i could form a list that i'll send out to each of the members Excellent. Great. Excellent. Oh, okay. Now, Denise already put hers in the chat. So, okay. Should we just do that? You want to just do it right now? I don't know if the chat so shows up on the recording or not. I mean, maybe we can just email Mark. Okay. Just, why don't we just reply to all on the agenda and Zoom link? That's yeah. Great. Okay. Um, great. So, um, thank you, Andy, so much for leading that. That's awesome. I, I just want to mention you've got what challenges do you think this Hadley CPC fate might face in the future? And I, my, my fear, my, my, I think the biggest challenge is that the town needs several million, quite a few million dollars to take care of, you know, the town hall, Russell and Goodwin, and they're really looking to CPA to supply this. And the, those funds are not there. We might, you know, we've got 2 million now, we could possibly bond another 2 million but then that would hinder what we can do for the next 10 to 15 years. Um, so it's helping people understand it's not the answer to everything. So that's, you know, that's, I think, a challenge we have is helping people understand we can't, you know, yeah, it doesn't mean we don't think they're good projects, but you can't fund tens of millions of dollars with the funds that we have. Um, yeah, but I feel really good about the composition of the committee now, and yeah, I feel absolutely. confident that we'll be able to meet any of these challenges in a way that's best for this town and good for CPA. Good. A um, few other things. Um, I did do up some quick minutes because I needed to go back and see how we voted to do um, the two warrant articles on the, the climb back and the extension. Um, which I can show you those Warren articles if you want. But um, while I was going through, I just, I mean, I did not do them to the the minute detail that Mark is so well, does so well, but I did them as a, um, as more, you know, at least, at least people can see what was talked about. And if they really want the details, they can watch the YouTube, <laughs> YouTube video. Um, but um, did everybody get the minutes or get a chance to look at them? Yep. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd move that we approve the minutes. I second. I third. Discussion? <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, aye. 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 Okay, good. And a commendation to the chair for doing the work of the secretary. <laughs> Well, the secretary's had a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, really, Mark, your minutes are too good. <laughs> you know, record the votes and maybe the to-do list, and then, like, that's it. Um, and, okay, well, I'll get this one up on the um, website, and we'll work on filling in the others. So another thing we have, just making sure there's nothing else here, is our next meeting date. Um, I think we're good. Oh, you know, um, I do want to just, all right, more an article. Um, one other thing for a goal is our application is, 
I, that's a frustration for me. I think people can fill out a bare minimum and turn it in and feel like they filled out our application. And I did, I'm sure you probably didn't have a chance to look all through it, but I sent you that plan that um, Jutesbury has and um, they have a quite detailed application. Um, and other towns certainly have a much more detailed application where it spells out what is the public good, where it spells out what are the expenses um, and who's paying for them and what other funding are you having and how is this, what, you know, what area does this meet and why does it meet it? What support do you have in town in terms of like the historic commission or, you know, any other um, committees? If it's a property, what is the deed and page number? What is the address? What is the, you know, plot map and um, all that information that I feel like we tease out of people over quite a few emails and conversations and I'm sending you out email after email as they send me stuff in instead of here it is, you know, <laughs> comprehensive. So I think um, I think a more detailed application would be helpful to the applicant in terms of knowing what they need to present um, and also um, and the other thing that's happened is sometimes we pass everything it goes right through town hall or right through town meeting and then it gets to town hall and they don't have the information they need. Um, so it would help, I think, with that. So I know we just have uh, Lisa and Ray are working on um, the FAQs. Does anyone else want to maybe work on the application with me or with someone else um, to try to come up with something before our February meeting. Mark? Yeah. Wonderful. Does anyone yeah. else want to or? Um, we could draft up something like maybe what we have is like the general front page and then maybe there's a legal information page where you get into the deed and the plot and, the, okay. and then maybe there's a funding page where you talk about other, yeah. So maybe right. there's a logical way to lay that out in layers that doesn't seem overwhelming. Denise, do you want in on this too? Yeah, I would help out with that if you if you Great. want. That would be wonderful. All right. Um thank you. Mark and Denise. And there's 180 towns doing this and most of their stuff is all online. So it's you know there's ones to look at and uh, you know it's it's um and the shoots ferry has a conservation community preservation plan and that's a goal for another time but that was pretty impressive i mean they actually listed projects and things that they'd like to see done in town different um parks different buildings restored different i mean they had a they had done a lot of brainstorming for that and you know and then that's one of their questions is how do you how does your project coordinate with our plan and I you know that was interesting but I think that's that's down the road but I sent it out there just to um and the um Denise was kind enough to send me the coalition has information on a historic preservation restriction which I did forward to um Paul and it has a link to um one that was done in Nantucket as a as an example and that seemed like it might be good to have as a link from our web page, um, or it could be, a, you know, under the but both under the frequently asked questions, you know, what what's involved with a historic preservation restriction, but also a link from our website just to the coalition page. And I like links better than PDFs because as the links update their information, we don't. I mean the. The PDF, like every after every town meeting, I go on and update what was passed, um, and then update um, if money was clawed back. Um, but other than that, it's you know trying to do links. Um, okay, so our next meeting, um, we have in February, and we you know we try to stay away from March because uh, so many of the finance and committees and, and others are just so busy trying to put the budget together. Um, we did January for a while, but we aren't, because we aren't part of the town budget, you know, they don't need our stuff so early. 
Um, so February seems to work well, but if we do applications again by February 1st, I suggested February 12th for our first meeting, and then um, either the February 26th or March 4th for the second one with, you know, skipping school vacation, skipping President's Day is the 19th. Um, I liked having an extra week between the two meetings this time. I mean, it was nice to not feel like it was so fast, um, but I don't know if it, um, if we have questions, if people need to get stuff together, the applicants need more information, it gives them a little more time too. But especially Andy Klopaki, who's on finance, I mean, does March 4th start interfering with a lot of your meetings with that or? Um, it's, uh, that's right at the beginning of the thick of it, it, it or probably in it at that point, um, because we meet weekly for, you know, posted, posted months. So, um, it's, it's hard to avoid it. So, uh, just, I just put it on a different night. Be okay. So what would people like? Is February 12th and the 26th or February 12th and March 4th? I vote March 4th. I'm not available the 26th. What's March 4th? March 4th. I like that. I like having that extra week. I think it just makes it a little bit easier. Um, certainly for me. <laughs> but um, do you think we'll be off of Zoom by then? I mean, will the state allow us to keep meeting on Zoom if that's what the, we're the state has extended it through twenty twenty five? So yeah, it's our okay. choice. Okay. Um, I mean, this this time we all said Zoom was fine. Um, one thing about February is then we don't have to worry about snowstorms or icy roads. That's one thing I like about Zoom in February. But um, yeah, and we have found on the planning board that uh, as much as we like meeting in person, meeting in Zoom, we get a lot better uh, attendance. That we're not really having. We don't really get attendance at our meetings, but I guess if it's uh, if you had it in person, would they still record it so that it would be? Because having the Zoom recordings, I think people like to be able to go back and see that. Right. We did. Um, we did have Hadley Media record the meetings, but it's a lot easier to do it via Zoom to record yeah. it for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's colder, but it's easier yeah. easier to see the the attachments to the mm. shared screens and right. but it's it's yeah um i like that idea i mean we will i assume have a new person i mean another thing we could do is a little training session like i think it was mark suggested um because you know ray's pretty new and reese is still getting used to everything and We'll have um, the select board is meeting, I think, this coming Wednesday to hopefully appoint um, Adam, who came last time to the to the committee. So, um, you know, we could we could choose another date sometime to do a training session too. But um, and, and in between now and then, I would suggest that you just call another committee member and just talk. You know, I call Mark and Mary all the time to talk about the CPA stuff. Um, and it's really helpful to clear my ideas and to ask questions um, and to blow off steam. Um, so, you know, you can call me anytime. Happy to talk about CPA. And as long as you don't talk in series with a quorum, you know, right. on one and, you know. Right. I mean, if Andy called four of us to talk about the same thing that would violate open meeting law, but just calling one or two. Well, just, you can only call one because you can't call three, right? No, you're in the last century. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. But I think if we're not discussing projects, approval right. or disapproval of projects, I'm not sure exactly. that the open meeting law it really even If is. it's not content. No, if you're just talking ge in general, yes. Okay. I think we should be all right. The quorum for us is five. Okay. Nine members. 
Well, right now it's eight, I guess. So maybe it's four. So it's still five. It's still yeah, five. It has to be okay. over half. Okay. So um, yeah. All right. So, well, we'll um. I'm not hearing. Let's have another meeting between February. So we'll <laughs> we'll um, and you know I'll I'll certainly um send Adam some information and talk to him some too. Um, and AMF, you will let us know when Stuart is planning to come out. Uh, no fixed it. date yet, but yeah. he's hoping to arrange it with them, and we'll piggyback for sure. Okay. Cold rain is not. <laughs> it's not next door. <laughs> no, but you don't have to drive to Boston. No, no. If it does it soon, the... if he does it soon, we could step out of his session and do a zip line through the you know the fall foliage up at uh, Berkshire <laughs> East. They get winter early up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he asked me if I would come to the uh, information session. He said. Uh, you know, people in the western part of the state might be more open to the message coming from somebody who also lives out in the western part of the state. I said, you mean as opposed to you eastern intellectual elites <laughs> who, who hog everything? And he said, exactly. <laughs> uh, before we go, I want to invite people to the Porter Phelps Huntington House on Saturday, the 23rd, where they're doing this big um, kickoff project about uh, people who worked and lived at 40 acres who were not part of the famous uh, family. And they're putting up some um, uh, markers for four uh, enslaved workers um, and a little bit about them hitting their history. So please come. That's going to be great. And they had an event um, to prep the Historic Commission and to prep the CPA for what they want to do next year, which is um, restoring the building across the street um, from the Porter Phelps. And Andy and I were the only ones that showed up. And they gave us this wonderful tour through with all this information and a talk. And and um, my husband came too, and, and um, we wandered through. And it's a really neat building. It was built by somebody that... Phelps. It was Phelps family that had a lot of money. It wasn't your typical farmhouse in Hadley, and it has a lot of features and and um, so. But it tells more of the story they're trying to tell. So they their house needs a ton of work, and um, they're hoping to look to CPA like so many people are. Other things in the works, you know, the, the rest of town hall needs work. Um, I've heard about that. The Goodwin needs who knows how much and and russell and um always hope for more aprs and and other projects people have so but those but porter phelps has mentioned they they're hoping to do something fairly soon so um we'll see and, and something big and we're something talking big. we're talking major bucks here yeah all right we're on time and anything else um before we sign off I just want to uh, take back my derogatory reference to Dunkin' Donuts. I didn't mean to pick on them specifically. I was trying to think of someone who had iconic uh, front-facing imaging. And actually, that was a bad example because here in in Hadley, they've actually pared down there. So I just don't want to get anyone upset. No room for a drive through there anyway. Hmm? There's no room for a drive through there anyway. Uh, right, right, right. If, if any Dunkin' Donut lovers were offended, we apologize. <laughs> you have to throw them out the window as you drive by. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Does anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? Oh, After, I will. I will thank Mary for all your work. Oh, you're welcome. Amen to that. Well, it's a great committee. It's a lot of support. I really appreciate everyone's feedback. And I, I did, uh, Andy Morris Friedman is vice president, and I, I remind him of that as I call him to go over stuff. <laughs> he flies on Air Force Two. <laughs> as long as you're healthy, Mary, I don't mind being vice oh, president. Vice chair, vice chair. <laughs> Wrong term. <laughs>
Um, all right. Good night, everybody. I, I second the motion. Yes. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.